Hello, seekers of success. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the daily habits that propel ordinary individuals to extraordinary heights of success. From visionary entrepreneurs and accomplished artists to innovative thinkers and resilient leaders, successful people across all walks of life share one common trait, a commitment to daily habits that foster growth, productivity, and fulfillment. Habits are the building blocks of success. They shape our thoughts, actions, and ultimately, our destinies. Yet for many, the path to success can seem elusive, shrouded in mystery and complexity. How do successful people achieve their goals? What sets them apart from the rest? The answers lie in the daily rituals and routines that successful individuals incorporate into their lives. These habits, though seemingly simple, wield immense power to transform our lives and propel us towards our goals with unwavering determination. As we journey through the daily habits of successful people, I invite you to approach this exploration with an open mind and a willingness to learn. The insights we'll uncover today have the potential to revolutionize your approach to life and unlock new levels of achievement and fulfillment. So are you ready to discover the daily habits that can catapult you to success? If so, let's dive in and explore the key practices that have empowered countless individuals to realize their dreams and live life on their own terms. You want to transform your personal and professional life? So get ready to immerse yourself in a unique personal development experience with Brian Tracy's Ultimate Guide. Hello, I'm Brian Tracy and I'm always asked, what are the habits of successful people? What do successful people do every day that puts them in the top 20% of money earners in our society? Well, Aristotle said that 95% of everything you do is the result of habit. So the rule is to form good habits and make them your masters instead of allowing bad habits to form. In fact, the other rule says this, good habits are hard to form but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to form but hard to live with. One of the turning points in my life and my studies of psychology was the discovery that all habits are learned and can be unlearned. You don't actually unlearn them. You simply replace them with a good habit that has more power and impact. And how do you develop a good habit? You develop a habit through repetition. Almost everything you do from the moment you wake up in the morning is a habit. Imagine a future where your dreams and aspirations come true. How would you get there? The answer lies in investing in yourself, dedicating just 3% of your income to personal development. And this is a very good habit because those who complain about the lack of changes in their lives often overlook the importance of taking proactive steps towards improvement. On this journey of self-discovery, I will guide you through the seven essential pillars of personal development, from strengthening your personal skills to financial empowerment. Each step will bring you closer to the best version of yourself. How can you start? Begin by identifying your current skills and areas for improvement. Are you ready to step out of your comfort zone and grow personally? It's time to take action and be proactive in your growth. But success doesn't stop there. From the power of attitude to the importance of a positive mental attitude, each factor will bring you closer to your goals. Remember, luck is nothing more than a combination of preparation and opportunity. So, are you ready to reach your full potential? Subscribe now, like, and share this video with your friends. Together, we can embark on a journey of transformation and achieve the best life possible. Thank you for joining us on this exciting journey to success. Personal development is the process of improving through conscious habits and activities. We seek personal growth to enhance our quality of life and achieve our dreams and aspirations. Personal development is a process that requires time, effort, and patience with yourself. If you set a goal, make a plan, and work on it every day, you will see progress in all aspects of your personal and professional life, sometimes much faster than you can imagine. It's an endless and truly transformative journey. There are seven essential pillars of personal development. If you focus on these seven key aspects, you can grow and achieve your goals faster than you thought possible. The first one is personal skills. Personal skills are areas of expertise you were born with or have practiced, perfected, or wish to perfect. You may have heard them called soft skills. In a work environment, these skills include being reliable, a problem solver, motivated, adaptable, hardworking, collaborative, innovative, respectful, intuitive, dynamic, and creative. All of these are essential skills for success. Knowing where you excel and where you could improve is very helpful for your personal and professional life. Now think about what personal skills you exemplify now and which ones might need improvement. How will you share your skills with others? And what will you do to master new ones? The second pillar is personal growth. 
Personal growth involves bettering yourself, stepping out of your comfort zone, and focusing on being a better version of yourself. As humans, our minds are constantly evolving, and your task is always to be a better version of yourself today than yesterday. Really think about which areas of your personal life you want to improve, and then take action every day to make those changes. The third pillar is personal power. Personal power is being connected and supported by people and money around you. Surrounding yourself with peers, friends, and family with similar goals and willing to help can directly impact your success. Money in the bank provides freedom and the ability to make the most of certain opportunities when they arise. The fourth pillar is personal improvement. Personal improvement stems from good work habits and a positive mental attitude. Thinking before acting is critical to developing good work habits. Setting priorities on a list and considering the likely consequences before starting is essential. Maintaining a positive mental attitude will reduce the amount of time it will take you to reach your goal. The fifth pillar is personal empowerment. Promoting a positive self-image and creativity in your daily life can accelerate the time it will take you to achieve your goals and increase your personal empowerment. Creative thinking means constantly looking for faster, better, easier, and cheaper ways to get the job done. It's important to constantly challenge yourself to learn and grow using creative thinking to reach your goals and empower yourself. Think about the areas of your life that cause you frustration, concern, or disappointment. How can you use creative thinking to empower yourself and improve these areas? The sixth pillar is personal analysis. It's very important to be aware of the areas where you have natural skills, as well as analyzing the areas where you need to improve. Being honest about where you currently stand is the first step forward. You should be constantly evaluating where you stand today in relation to achieving your goals and ambitions in the future. Where do you need personal improvement? Be honest with yourself to drive yourself forward. The last pillar is personal goals. Ambition is wasted when there are no clear goals in sight. Setting short and long-term goals is a crucial step. Clearly establish these goals for yourself as having a defined plan will help you gain a clear understanding of what strategies are necessary to reach your desired destination. What are your goals? What is your plan to achieve them? And how can you hold yourself accountable as well as reward yourself for successes? Here's an insightful idea shared by a friend from Germany. The learning process involves plateaus initially. At first, you might feel like you're making little progress. However, this is normal and doesn't mean you're not advancing. It's essential to persist and keep going even when it seems like you're not moving forward. Over time, you will experience significant breakthroughs and be amazed at how far you've come. In these periods of stagnation, many people lose motivation and give up. However, these plateaus are a normal part of the learning process. You must have faith that you are progressing even when you don't see immediate results. Just like seeds germinate underground before they bloom. Here are nine success factors you should know to accelerate your progress in life. Each of these factors has been proven crucial to achieving the best possible life, both for yourself and others. By methodically incorporating one or more of these success factors into your life, you can boost your career and achieve the best life for yourself at a faster pace than you could without following these steps. The first of the other nine success factors is education. In our society, the highest paid individuals are those who know more about what they are doing than the average person. They possess a deeper understanding of critical data, insights, information, and skills in their respective fields. As a result, they can make a more valuable contribution in a knowledge-based society and lead the best possible life. They're not only more valued and respected, but also tend to earn more money and receive promotions more frequently, mainly due to their higher level of education. The rule is clear. To earn more, you must learn more. If you want to increase your income and achieve the best possible life for yourself, you must improve your level of intellectual capital and thus increase the value of the knowledge component in your chosen field. And remember, you must start this journey from today. As my friend Jim wisely said, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you rich. This truth applies to you as well. The second of the nine success factors you can use to achieve the best possible life for yourself is simply skill. Your level of skill in your field will determine the quality and quantity of your results. The better you become at what you do, the easier it will be for you to advance and achieve a particular level of results. As you increase your skill level in your field through study and experience, 
you become better and better at doing the little things that increase the speed and predictability of your results. Remember that skills are things that can be developed over and over again, and all business skills can be learned. You can learn any skill you need to achieve any business goal you have set for yourself. As we've just heard from Brian Tracy, the third key factor for advancing and progressing in life lies in developing an extensive network of contacts. Indeed, every major change and opportunity in our lives often comes through the connections we make with others. The more people we know, appreciate, and are willing to help, the greater our potential for achieving success and fulfillment. To expand your network of contacts, Brian emphasizes the importance of continuous networking at every opportunity. There's a direct correlation between the size of your network and your ability to leverage it effectively. And the strategy is simple. When meeting new people, focus not on what you can get from them, but rather on what you can offer in return. But networking is just one piece of the puzzle. As Brian highlights, another crucial success factor is money. Having financial resources at your disposal affords you greater freedom and flexibility to seize opportunities as they arise. In life, your options are your freedom. Without financial stability, you may find yourself trapped in a cycle of limitations, unable to pursue your goals, or take advantage of new possibilities. As Brian astutely points out, being stuck in a dead-end job due to financial constraints can hinder your potential and prevent you from moving forward. So as we reflect on these essential success factors, let us remember the importance of both building meaningful connections and cultivating financial stability. By doing so, we empower ourselves to navigate life's challenges with confidence and embrace the opportunities that come our way. But if you have money, they call this opportunity money. If you have money saved, you can walk away from a bad job and take time to find exactly the right job for you. This idea of saving money so that you're prepared to take opportunities has transformed many, many lives. The fifth of these success factors that allows you to do much more in a shorter period of time to dramatically accelerate your career is simply good work habits. Your ability to increase your return on investment or return on time invested can allow you to achieve much more in a shorter period of time than someone who is disorganized and messy. Developing good work habits requires you to think before you act, make a list, and set priorities on the list before starting. Good work habits require you to consider the likely consequences, positive or negative, of each activity before beginning. Good work habits enable you to achieve more results with less time and effort. There's a rule that says, every minute you spend planning will save you 10 minutes in execution. The more you think, plan, and prioritize in your work, the more productive and valuable you will become. The sixth success factor we've uncovered for your career in life is a positive mental attitude. Shortening the time it takes to reach your goals by becoming so positive that others will help you. And a positive mental attitude is largely a decision you make for yourself. Remember, no one makes you feel anything. Everything you feel is determined by how you choose to react to a situation. And remember, you become what you do. If you engage in the same activities as positive, confident, and optimistic people, eventually, you will become one of them and live the best possible life. Anyone can remain positive when things are going well. It's your ability to look for the good in every situation that will help you start to see positive things and move forward in life. Research from the University of Pennsylvania calls it your interpretive style, how you explain things to yourself. If you interpret things that happen to you positively, you'll stay positive. If you explain them negatively, you become negative. But the choice is always yours. The seventh of these success factors that you can incorporate into your lifestyle and that can help you achieve the best life for yourself, is developing a positive image. Remember, people judge you by your outward appearance. So, taking the time to present an attractive image in your person, your clothing, your personal grooming, and your accessories can have a disproportionate impact on the doors that open to you and the people who are willing to help you move forward in your life. Look at pictures of the most successful people in your field and you'll likely find that they look great in their photographs. And you can too. Now, creativity is another wonderful way, the number nine, to start moving forward in life and increase the speed at which you reach your goals. Creativity is something that requires you to constantly look for better, faster, easier, and cheaper ways to do your work. Remember, 
A good idea is all you need to start a fortune or transform your career. Now, perhaps the most important success factor for accelerating your life and career is your character. Self-discipline combined with honesty will open countless doors. Confidence is the foundation of all relationships. When people know you, believe in you, and are convinced they can trust you to keep your word and do what you say you will do, they will feel it's much more likely that they'll get the things they want through you and get them faster, sooner, easier, and with greater certainty. And when you apply all these concepts together to become a better, more efficient, and more effective person, your life will start to move forward so rapidly that you'll be surprised, and so will everyone around you. Now let's talk about luck. It's not just a matter of chance. It's about probabilities. People often confuse luck with chance, like gambling in Las Vegas, which is purely a game of chance with no control over the outcomes. However, real luck is about manipulating probabilities. Setting clear goals increases your likelihood of success, and acquiring knowledge about your business improves your chances in the business world. Treating people well increases your likelihood of forming positive relationships, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle increases your chances of being physically attractive and robust. Essentially, luck is the result of a series of deliberate actions and choices. That leads to great success when traced backward. So instead of attributing it to luck, it's more accurate to recognize the deliberate steps taken to achieve it. A friend of mine, a gentleman named Ivan Sangoran, came to America after several years of trying and repeatedly failing to do so, finally getting a visa and a plane ticket. He arrived in New York with everything he owned in a cardboard box tied with string. He couldn't speak a single word of English. He made his way to the neighborhood in New York called Little Russia, where a large number of Russian immigrants lived. In his first year in America, the only job he could get was delivering pizza, either for a Russian pizzeria or to other Russians within a few blocks radius. But Ivan had a tremendous advantage that many other people lack. He knew without a doubt that America was the land of opportunity. He also knew that the key to this new land was the ability to speak English fluently. So he started listening to my audio programs on success and achievement, and eventually those of other successful authors and narrators. He read our books, learned English, and learned about success simultaneously. His mind was completely open because none of these principles had been taught to him while he lived in the Soviet Union. By the end of his first year, his English was good enough to get a job in sales with a printing company. By the end of his second year, he was doing so well that he decided to start his own company as a printing broker. In his third year in America, he sold printing services worth $2 million and earned over $400,000 in personal income. His success had absolutely nothing to do with luck. America is full of hundreds of thousands of people who have come from difficult backgrounds with all kinds of problems and liabilities, yet have gone on to build wonderful lives for themselves. Often the people around them attribute their good fortune to luck. However, if you talk to these people and trace their stories from where they started to where they are now, you'll discover that luck had nothing to do with their success and has nothing to do with yours. And as we draw our exploration of the daily habits of successful people to a close, let us take a moment to reflect on the profound insights we've uncovered. The habits we've discussed today are not merely routines, they are the foundation upon which success is built. But let us not simply marvel at the habits of successful individuals, let us take action. Let us commit to incorporating these principles into our own lives, one habit at a time. For it is through consistent effort and intentional action that we will truly transform our lives and achieve our greatest aspirations. As you reflect on the lessons learned today, I encourage you to identify one key habit, a single practice or routine that resonates deeply with you and holds the power to propel you towards success. Make a commitment to integrate this habit into your daily life and watch as it transforms your mindset, your actions, and ultimately, your destiny. Remember, success is not a destination, but a journey. A journey defined by the daily habits and choices we make. By embracing the habits of successful people, you are taking a powerful step towards creating the life you've always dreamed of. So, are you ready to embark on this journey of transformation? Are you ready to cultivate the habits that will lead you to success? If so, let today be the beginning of a new chapter. A chapter filled with purpose, passion, and unlimited potential. Thank you for joining me on this enlightening journey. May the habits we've explored today serve as guiding lights on your path to success. And may you always remember, 
The power to achieve greatness lies within you. Seize it with courage, determination, and unwavering belief in yourself. Until we meet again, may your days be filled with success, abundance, and joy. You are literally swamped with work and personal responsibilities, projects, stacks of magazines to read, and piles of books you intend to get to one of these days as soon as you get caught up. But the fact is that you will never get far enough ahead to be able to get to all those books, magazines, and leisure time activities that you dream of. No matter how many personal productivity techniques you master, there will always be more to do than you can ever accomplish in the time you have available to you. You can get control of your time and your life only by changing the way you think. You can get control of your tasks and activities only to the degree that you stop doing some things and start spending more time on the few activities that can really make a difference in your life. When you learn these methods and techniques and apply them over and over until they become habits, you will alter the course of your life in a very positive way. Throughout my career I have found a simple truth. The ability to concentrate single-mindedly on your most important task, to do it well and to finish it completely, is the key to great success, achievement, respect, status and happiness in life. If you're like most people today, you are overwhelmed with too much to do and too little time. Because of this you will never be able to do everything you have to do. You will always be behind in some of your tasks and responsibilities, and probably in many of them, perhaps more than ever before. Your ability to select your most important task at each moment and then to start on that task and get it done both quickly and well will probably have more of an impact on your success than any other quality or skill you can develop. It's been said for many years that if the first thing you do each morning is to eat a live frog, you can then go through the day with the satisfaction of knowing that is probably the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day long. Your frog is your biggest, most important task. It's the one you're most likely to procrastinate on if you don't do something about it right now. If you have to eat two frogs, eat the ugliest one first. This is another way of saying that if you have two important tasks, strike with the biggest, hardest, and most difficult task first. Continually remind yourself that one of the most important decisions you make each day is your choice of what you will do immediately and what you will do later, if you do it at all. The key to reaching high levels of performance and productivity is for you to develop a lifelong habit of tackling your major task first thing each morning. Successful, effective people are those who launch directly into their major tasks and then discipline themselves to work steadily and single-mindedly until those tasks are complete. In our world, you are paid for making a valuable contribution and especially for making the contribution that is expected of you. Failure to execute is one of the biggest problems in organizations today. They talk continually, hold endless meetings and make wonderful plans, but in the final analysis, no one does the job and gets the results required. Fully 95% of your success in life and work will be determined by the kinds of habits that you develop over time. The habit of setting priorities, overcoming procrastination and getting on with your most important task is learnable through practice and repetition over and over again until it locks into your subconscious mind and becomes a permanent part of your behavior. You are designed mentally and emotionally in such a way that task completion gives you a positive feeling whenever you complete a task of any size or importance. One of the keys to living a wonderful life, having a successful career, and feeling terrific about yourself is for you to develop the habit of starting and finishing important jobs. Practice is the key to mastering any new skill. With practice, you can learn any behavior or develop any habit that you consider either desirable or necessary. You need three qualities to develop the habits of focus and concentration which are all learnable. First, make a decision to develop the habit of task completion. Second, discipline yourself to practice the principles you're about to learn until you master them. And finally, back everything you do with determination until the habit is locked in and becomes a permanent part of your personality.
Now, there's a special way that you can accelerate your progress toward becoming highly productive. See yourself as the kind of person who gets important jobs done quickly and well, on a consistent basis. Visualize yourself as the person you intend to be. As professional speaker Jim Cathcart says, the person you see is the person you will be. When you train yourself through repetition and practice to overcome procrastination and get your most important task completed quickly, you will move yourself onto the fast track in your life and career and step on the accelerator. Clarity is the most important concept in personal productivity. The more clear you are about what it is you want and what you have to do to achieve it, the easier it is for you to overcome procrastination. Eat your frog and get on with the completion of the task. A major reason for procrastination and lack of motivation is vagueness and confusion about what you are supposed to do. Here's a great rule for success. Think on paper. Only about 3% of adults have clear written goals. These people accomplish 5 and 10 times as much as people of equal or better education and ability, but who, for whatever reason, have never taken the time to write out exactly what it is they want. There's a powerful formula for setting and achieving goals that you can use for the rest of your life. It consists of seven simple steps. Here it is. Step number one. Decide exactly what you want. Either decide for yourself or sit down with your boss and discuss your goals and objectives until you are crystal clear about exactly what is expected of you and in what order of priority. Step number two. Write it down. When you write down your goal, you crystallize it and give it tangible form. On the other hand, a goal or objective that's not in writing is merely a wish or a fantasy. Unwritten goals lead to confusion, vagueness, misdirection, and numerous mistakes. Step number three, set a deadline on your goal. Without a definite deadline accompanied by the assignment or acceptance of specific responsibilities for completion, you will naturally procrastinate and get very little done. Step number four, make a list of everything that you can think of that you're going to have to do to achieve your goal. A list gives you a visual picture of the larger task or objective. It dramatically increases the likelihood that you will achieve your goal as you have defined it and on schedule. Step number five. Organize the list into a plan. Take a few minutes to decide what you need to do first and what you can do later. Decide what has to be done before something else and what needs to be done afterwards. With a written goal and an organized plan of action, you will be far more productive and efficient than someone who is carrying his goals around in his mind. Step number six. Take action on your plan immediately. For you to achieve any kind of success, execution is everything. And finally, step number seven. Resolve to do something every single day that moves you toward your major goal. Read a specific number of pages on a key subject. Call on a specific number of prospects or customers. Engage in a specific period of physical exercise. Learn a certain number of new words in a foreign language. This decision, this discipline alone, can make you one of the most productive and successful people of your generation. Clear written goals have a wonderful effect on your thinking. The bigger your goals and the clearer they are, the more excited you become about achieving them. Think about your goals and review them daily. Every morning when you begin, take action on the most important task you can accomplish to achieve your most important goal at the moment. Now here's what you can do to put this idea into action immediately. Take a clean sheet of paper right now and make a list of 10 goals that you want to accomplish in the next year. Use the present tense, positive and first person so that they are immediately accepted by your subconscious mind. For example, you would write, I earn X number of dollars per year, then go back over your list of 10 goals and select the one goal that, if you achieved it, would have the greatest positive impact on your life. This exercise alone could change your life if you had a major purpose you wanted to do, the people that could help you do it and then have the sufficient phase to keep you going while you did it. Don't you see that would be about all you would need? You need personal initiative. You need the imagination. You need enthusiasm. This philosophy is something like baking a cake. And if you took out any one of those ingredients, you wouldn't have the same kind of cake. You can't leave out any one of these 17 principles. It'd be just like taking a link out of a chain. And these are the 14 principles supporting these three. Faith is a state of mind that has been called the mainspring of the soul, through which one's aims, desires, plans, and purposes may be translated into their physical or financial equipment. 
Now, when you speak of applied faith, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about something vastly different from just mere belief. That's the action part of things. And there are a lot of people, you know, who believe in things, but they don't do anything about them. Two fundamentals of faith are, first of all, definiteness of purpose supported by personal initiative and action. Action, action, action. But more action, the better. Next, a positive mind free from all negatives such as fear and hatred, jealousy and greed. A positive mental attitude determines the effect of this update. And next, a mastermind alliance with one or more people who radiate courage based on faith and are suited mentally and spiritually to one's needs in carrying out a given purpose. And next, recognition of the fact that every adversity carries with it the seed of an equivalent benefit and temporary defeat is not failure until it has been accepted as such. Do you know where the majority of people fall down in connection with their application of their faith? It's while they're depleted and they accept that defeat as being something that can't do anything about it. They become discouraged, they build up inferiority complexes instead of reversing that order and using that defeat as nothing more than temporary and making another effort. And next, the habit of affirming one's definite major purpose in the form of a prayer at least once daily. Now the subconscious mind only knows what you tell it. It doesn't know the difference between a lie and the truth. It doesn't know the difference between a penny and a million dollars. And if you send over predominating thoughts on poverty and ill health and failure, that's exactly what you'll get. And it's necessary for you to affirm over and over again these objects that you are going to obtain in life until you educate your subconscious mind to attract automatically to you the things that are related to what you're aiming to attain in life. That the individual you that is, is a minute expression of this intelligence and as such you, the individual. And if I had ever wavered for one second from the time that I started with Mr. Carnegie up until the time I gave this philosophy to the world, if I had wavered one second in my belief that I would do it, I would never have done it. Do you have any idea what was the strongest part in what I've achieved? I am no more brilliant than the average person, no more intelligent than the average person. But there was something in there that was responsible for in other words, I believed I could do it, and I never stopped believing it. And I want to tell you that if you can take that attitude towards yourself, if you can throw yourself over on the side of yourself when you're overtaken by adversity, if you can stand by and not also go over against yourself, then you're using up like faith, and you've got to do that. Have you ever thought of that? Nobody is permitted to attain a high state in life and stay there without being tested. Any more than anybody is allowed to go into a well-managed business and go up to a high position and stay there. Without even being tested with lower positions, I don't know how the Creator runs His business entirely. But I can definitely see that He allows nobody to attain a higher state in life without giving Him severe tests. The man of great achievement in all walks of life back through the ages were great only in proportion as they had been defeated and as they had met with opposition. Couldn't have been a coincidence that every one of these outstanding men was great in proportion exactly as he had been small and as he had been opposed and as he had had to struggle. Anything you want to do, no matter what you call it, we're all talking about one, the first girl, there's only one. There's one first cause that's responsible for this great universe we're living in. I call it the infinite intelligence. And the infinite intelligence happens to be a sort of a neutral, in-between term that nobody can object to. Nobody at all. Unless you can absolutely put down on paper evidence that there is a first cause that you can draw on. Why then, you are not going to be able to make the foolish use of applied food while there's more evidence of a first cause. And there isn't anything that I know of my new part of that intelligence expressing through your brain. The only limitations are those which you set up in your own mind or permit somebody to set up there or circumstances to establish for you. Next. Careful inventory of your past defeats and adversities from which it becomes obvious that all such experiences do carry the seed of an equivalent benefit, never a defeat. Every failure carries with it the seed of an equivalent benefit. Wouldn't mean a thing in the world to you unless you examine enough illustrations in your own experience. You see that it always works out that way. That's why I want you to examine these adversities that come to you. Do you know that oftentimes your adversities are your greatest blessings. And I want to tell you that without some Clint and major adversities I've gone through, I would never been able to approve the soundness of this f philosophy 
and that there is a scene of an equivalent benefit in every aversion. There will be things that happen to you in the future that are unpleasant and maybe some to me too. But uh, I tell you what I'm going to do when anything unpleasant happens to me. I'm going to immediately transmute it into something pleasant. A self-respect expressed through harmony with one's own conscience is certainly an important factor in applied faith. You don't have to ask anybody what's right or wrong. Your own conscience tells you unless you convert it into a conspirator instead of a cooperator. By choking it off and not responding to it, as so many people do, your conscience can be not only a guy, but it can also be corrupted towards a conspirator. It'll help you cover up your meanness if that weren't true. The, uh, there couldn't be so many fruits loose in the world that they concocting plans for starting bigger and better wars. They have no conscience. They've killed off the conscience. That conscience is a marvelous thing. And next to create a mental attitude favorable for the express. First of all, know what you want and determine what you have to give in return for it. Know what you want in life. And I learn not only in your major purpose, but in your minor persons. What kind of house do you want to live in? What kind of car do you want to drive? What kind of wardrobe do you want? What kind of presents are you going to buy your wife for a birthday? I know it's the little things in your life that make the difference between the half of this and unhappiness. And next, when you uh, affirm the object of your desires through prayer, let your, your imagination see yourself already in possession of the thing that you're going at. And that's the best salesmanship in the world when you grow up to sell a person an idea or a merchandise or a service. If you know positively that you're going to give him his money's worth and more, dude, before you stop, it does something to you. The neighbors do something to him that enables him to do that in return. Do something for you if you want your prayers to be effective. Don't wait until the time of need to utter them. Build up the habit of a prayer when you don't need anything. Wouldn't it be an interesting thing if I gave you a less assignment right now to write down before the night before you go to bed tonight everything that you have in this world to be thankful for. You, know, you may have a lot of things you don't want, but you have a lot of things you do want. Write down on this seven and express gratitude that you have these things that you like. And then start by expressing gratitude every night and every day. Keep your mind open for guidance from within. Yes, hunches. You'll get hunches. Treat them with civility. Examine them. And you may find that some of these very unusual hunches that you come are bringing you messages that you need to get you over the hump and whatever it is that you're doing. And when you are inspired by hunches to move on some plan created by your imagination, accept the plan and act upon it once. And remember always that there can be no such state of mind as faith without appropriate action. And when overtaken by defeat, as you may be many times, remember that man's faith is tested many times and your defeat may be only one of your testing times. We all go through that testing time and the ones that survive these tips can come out on top with an abiding faith are the ones that become truly great in life. Any negative state of mind will destroy the power of faith and result in a negative climax. Your state of mind is everything. That's the only thing you have control over. Your education, your background, your nationality, your creed has nothing whatsoever to do with your ability to achieve. It's the state of mind that you maintain. For me, that's the most profound thing in all of the knowledge of mankind. The most profound of all of us is the fact that the homeless person can take possession of his own mind. Just the change of his mental attitude changes from success to failure almost instantly. A burning desire is the sort of material of which faith is created. There are a lot of desires in the world, but they're, they're not burning desires and they're not obsessional as ours. And most people in their whole life never express or never experience an obsessional desire for anything. We wish for everybody to have a lot of money without having to work for it. I'll say wish for things. Wish for the Cadillac when they're driving it forward. And if you want a Cadillac car and you make up your mind to have it, get out and see that the men under you or the, or the job that you're holding and see that you put into it in this will imply to either Cadillac car. You have to weld them with a burning desire and then you have to do some action. You've got to start right where you stand with action. Now here's a lot of examples of men who have achieved. There is one down here that I particularly want to call your attention to. That of Miss Helen Keller who believed that she would learn to talk despite the fact that she had lost the use of her speech 
her sight, and her hearing. And yet, did you know, of course you do know, that Helen Keller became one of the best educated women in the world and all she has to go by is the vibration. I think with a woman with a handicap of that kind, all the way through life, getting joy out of life, rendering useful service, making speeches, if you have faith, keep your mind on that which you want and not on that which you do not want. How does one go about keeping his mind on all for the things he doesn't want? The way you keep your mind off of things you don't want is to transfer your mind over to things you do want and start talking about them. Start giving thanks for already possessing them. Won't sound silly to you because you know what you're doing. You're talking to your subconscious mind. You're re-educating yourself. You're keeping your mind fixed on things you want and off the things you don't want. And if you ever feel blue or discouraged or lacking in courage, I'll tell you a good remedy for them. May I sit down and take a tablet and start my rings? Number one, the thing that you want most in life. Number two, the thing that you want next month. Number three, the thing you want next moment. Describe the look that you want it on, whether you want to own a lot of acreage on top of the hill or down below the road or above the road. How many rooms you want that house to have, how you want each room furnished. Do a little mental winter shopping and believe you me, you'll get it. You'll get your mind over that looting issue. Get it onto something that's constructed. Start right in doing something physically. Writing down the things that you want. When anything bothers you, a lot of things that I can see have a lot of advantages I can use that I don't understand, but I don't need to understand them. I know which button to press to get the result I want, and I don't need to know how, what happens between the pressing of that button and the result that happens. How would I know? You suppose that any person can actually make life pay off point by point on his own terms instead of accepting the circumstances? There's only one way in this world that I could possibly know that, and that's by my own experiences, or can't get easily, that if you go back just a few years ago, what an astounding statement it is, because it's so broadly in contrast to what I might have said a few years back before I learned the secret of getting everything that I want. You must have a definite objective, a purpose, a goal before you can have faith in anything. Faith is a uh, middle attitude wherein the mind is cleared of all fears and doubts and directed toward the attainment of something definite through the inspiration of infinite intelligence. Faith's not going to go out and get you that Cadillac or that mean code or that new house that you want or that better job or that better business with all those clients that you need if you're a professional. But faith will guide you as to how you can do it. And then you find that there is always a part that you misplaced. And if infinite intelligence is very wisely provided, a system whereby you can be sure of getting your food out of the soil of the earth, how by complying with the laws of nature. You go out there and you plant the seed. You plant it in soil that you have examined to make sure it has the elements in there that you want into the plant. You plant it at the right season. You plant it at the right depth in the ground. All of those things you do by way of going the extra mile, you do them in advance and you comply with nature's law. So that's what you do. You do your part. Faith will do nothing for you if you expect everything to be done for you outside of yourself. When faith probably, my little notice, that word, probably down there, why do you think I say faith probably works through the subconscious section of the mend? I'll tell you why I put it there, because nobody knows definitively whether it does or not. It appears to work through the subconscious section of the mind. The subconscious acting as the gateway between the conscious section of the mind and infinite intelligence. My picture. Another picture of what happens when you pray properly is that your first condition, your mind, you know what it is you want, and then you give, you transfer over to your subconscious mind a clear picture. The only way you can reach into infinite intelligence in my book of rooms. Now the definite essential steps in the development of self-reliance based on faith. I'm going to call your attention to the most important ones. First of all, you adopt a major purpose to begin at once to attain it. You know, when you know what you want and you're starting to get it, you have a measure of self-reliance or you're demonstrating a major of self-reliance because if you didn't believe in yourself, you wouldn't even begin, would you? The very fact that you start, even though you're a long way from attaining the thing you're going after, shows that you have a measure or degree of self-reliance. And the more you pursue that idea, the stronger that belief will be. The next associate as many as possible 
of the nine basic motives with the object of the definite major purposes, you've had this experience that you wanted something very badly and in order to get to something that you want a very bad material something, it meant extra money that you couldn't lay your hands on. You didn't have it in the bank, you weren't earning it. Write out a list of all the advantages of your definite major purpose and call these into your minds many times daily. And it's the same thing with reference success if you accept any kind of a fear complex or an inferiority complex. If you don't expect success of yourself and develop a success expectation or consciousness, you're not going to be a success. You just have to do that. If your major purpose is to achieve some material thing or money, see yourself already in possession of it. And if your faith isn't great enough that you can see the thing already in your possession even before you start to get it, then you're not making use of applied things. Associate with people who are burning sympathy with you and your major purpose and lead them to encourage you in every way possible. Don't disclose your aims and purposes to people who are not absolutely dependable, loyal and close to you, especially loyal. But it's surprising how sometimes the people to whom you disclose your ideas, if they're good ideas, they go around the corner and beat you to the draw. And they're using your ideas before you use them. Or they're saying something to discourage you. Don't let a single day pass without making at least one definite move towards the achievement of your major purpose. Your mental attitude is the sum total of your thoughts at a given time. A positive mental attitude has its roots in the spiritual wills of one's soul. Mental attitude is the medium by which adversities may be transmuted into benefits. You'll find some of those that appeal to you more than others, make them your own. Surround yourself with suggestions everywhere you look. You'll see something uh, that suggests a positive mental attitude. You'll notice when you go into the office of a successful person or into the home of a successful person, if you can find these, then another place where he himself withdraws unto himself. You will find that oftentimes he has himself surrounded with pictures of those whom he considers great. Oftentimes he'll have mottos on the walls. I've seen hundreds of them. I walked into my friend Jennings Randolph's office when he was in Congress in Washington. I found he had all of the walls of his congressional office covered with the pictures of men whom he considered great. He did that to live in the environment of the great, in the environment of things that kept his mind positive. Start in where you are, in your home, in your business, in your office, and wherever you stay the most. Starting there to put up something that will give you a positive thought. Just before you go to bed, be surprised at how much good it will do you. Alan Lakin once said, if planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it right now. Your mind, your ability to think, plan and decide is your most powerful tool for overcoming procrastination and increasing your productivity. Conversely, as Alex McKenzie wrote, action without planning is the cause of every failure. Your ability to plan well in advance of acting is a measure of your overall competence. The better the plan you have, the easier it is for you to overcome procrastination. The good news is that it takes only about 10 or 12 minutes for you to plan out your day. But this small investment of time will save you at least two hours, 100 to 120 minutes in wasted time and diffuse effort throughout the day. When you consider how helpful planning can be in increasing your productivity and performance, planning is really quite simple to do. But all you need is a piece of paper and a pen. You can increase your productivity and output by 25% or more from the very first day that you begin working consistently from a list. Make your list the night before at the end of the workday. Your subconscious mind works on your list all night long while you sleep. You will wake up with great ideas and insights that you can use to get your job done faster and better than you, than you had initially thought. Now you need different lists for different purposes. First, you should create a master list on which you write down everything that you can think of that you want to do sometime in the future. Second, 
You should have a monthly list that you make up at the end of the month for the month ahead. Third, you should have a weekly list where you plan your entire week in advance. This disciplined, systematic time planning can be very helpful to you. You should transfer items from your monthly and weekly list onto your daily list. As you work through the day, tick off the items on your list as you complete them. Seeing yourself working progressively through your list motivates and energizes you. It raises your self-esteem, self-respect. Steady visible progress propels you forward and helps you to overcome procrastination. When you have a project of any kind, begin by making a list of every step that you will have to complete to finish the project from beginning to end. Organize a project task by priority and sequence. Then go to work on one task at a time. You will feel more and more effective and powerful. You will be naturally motivated to do even more. You will think better and more creatively. You will get more and better insights that enable you to do your work even faster. This feeling of progress will give you more energy and keep you going throughout the day. One of the most important rules of personal effectiveness is the 1090 rule. This rule says that the first 10% of time that you spend planning and organizing your work before you begin will save you as much as 90% of the time in getting the job done. Your ability to set goals and make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success. There's no other skill that will help you more in fulfilling your potential and achieving everything that you are able to accomplish. All major accomplishments today are called multitask jobs. They consist of a series of steps that must be taken in a particular way in order to accomplish a result of any significance. Even something as simple as preparing a dish in the kitchen with a recipe is a multitask job. Your ability to master the skill of planning and completing multitask jobs will enable you to accomplish vastly more than the average person and is critical to your success. The purpose of planning is to enable you to turn your major definite purpose into a planned multitask project with specific steps, a beginning, a middle, and an end, with clear deadlines and sub-deadlines. This is a skill that you can learn and master with practice. This skill will make you one of the most effective and influential people in your business or organization. And the more you practice it, the better at it you will get. All the ingredients necessary to create a plan for the achievement of one or more of your goals. First, you now have a clear vision of your ideal and result or Goal based on your values. You know what you want and why you want it. Second, you have written out your goals. Organize them by gear as your priority and selected your major definite purpose. Third, you have created measures and standards to track your progress. And you have set both deadlines and sub-deadlines as targets to aim at. Fourth, you have now identified the key obstacles, difficulties, and constraints that stand between you and your goal and organize them by priority. Fifth, you've identified the essential knowledge and skills that you will require to achieve your goal. Sixth, you have organized these competencies by priority and developed a plan to learn what you need to learn to accomplish what you have decided to accomplish. And seventh, you have identified the people, groups, and organizations whose help and cooperation you will require both inside and outside your business. You have decided on the specific steps you're going to take to earn the support and assistance of these people in achieving your goals. All successful people work from written plans. The great achievements of mankind, from the building of the pyramids forward to the great industrial operations of the modern age, were all preceded by and accompanied by detailed plans, carefully designed and thought through from beginning to end before they began. Every minute spent in planning saves 10 minutes in execution. Every minute that you spend planning and thinking before you begin will save you time, money, and energy in getting the results you desire. This is why it is said that failing to plan is planning to fail. The number one reason for failure is action without planning. There's a 6P formula for personal and business success. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. There are seven advantages to proper prior planning. First, the planning process forces you to organize your thinking and identify all the key issues that must be dealt with if you're ultimately going to be successful. Second, thinking through what you must do to accomplish your goals enables you to plan your actions carefully before you begin, thereby 
saving you an enormous cost of time, people, and money. Third, a good plan, thoroughly discussed and evaluated, enables you to identify flaws and errors that could prove fatal to your business later on. The fourth benefit is that it enables you to identify weaknesses in your plan and make provisions to compensate for those weaknesses. Often you can identify a fatal flaw that, if you are not aware of it, could lead to the failure of the enterprise. This is only possible by going through the planning process. Fifth, planning enables you to identify strengths and potential opportunities that you can take advantage of to increase the likelihood of success. Often you will be unaware of your particular strengths or the opportunities that exist in this situation before you go through the planning process. The sixth benefit is that it enables you to focus your time and money and concentrate all of your resources on the one or two objectives that you must achieve to make the enterprise successful. In the absence of clear focus and concentration, you will tend to spread your energies over a wide area and end up accomplishing very little. The seventh benefit is that it will inevitably save you hours, weeks, and months of confusion, mistakes, and losses of both money and energy. Planning is a discipline and a skill. It is both a habit and a competence. This means that you can learn it and learn them to a high level through repetition and practice. Planning is a skill that you can master, and it is much easier than you might think. A plan is a list of every activity that you will have to engage in from the beginning to the end in accomplishing a specific goal or objective. To begin the process of planning, you take a sheet of paper and you make a list of everything that you can think of that you will have to do to achieve your goal. This list then becomes your blueprint for the construction of your dream house of your ideal goal or result. The process of planning is for you now to organize your list by priority and sequence. You organize the items on your list by priority by determining which tasks or activities are more important than other tasks or activities in sequencing. You determine which activities need to be done before or after other activities. In planning, very often the success of the plan will be determined by the achievement of a particular goal or objective within the plan. The planning process helps you to identify the vital elements of the plan and focus more of your time and attention on the most important tasks and activities that must be accomplished before success is possible. No plan is perfect the first time it is created. Most plans to accomplish something new will fail over and over again at the beginning. Whenever your plan doesn't work, relax, take a deep breath, and revisit your plan. When you have a problem, resolve to be solution-oriented. Expect difficulties as a part of the process and resolve to respond to them effectively. If you're not achieving your goals on schedule, ask what is the problem? It seems that when you begin work on the achievement of a new goal, you immediately experience setbacks, obstacles, difficulties, and temporary failure. It's normal and natural. It takes tremendous effort to launch something new and make it successful. But this is the price that you have to pay to achieve the goals that you've set for yourself. One of the ways that you can think on paper is to create a project planning sheet for the accomplishment of a multitask goal. This project planning sheet can be very helpful in opening your eyes to the strengths and weaknesses of the planning process. But with a project planning sheet, which you can make yourself with a sheet of paper, you can now see your entire goal laid out in front of you with great clarity. Everyone who is responsible for carrying out a part of the plan should be involved in the planning process. It's often a shock to find out that something that seems simple and easy is actually going to take several weeks or months from beginning to end. A time constraint on a critical part of your plan can force you to revise your plans completely. When you start the planning process, your biggest concern should be accuracy in identifying every step necessary and the exact time required to accomplish every step in the plan. In the process of planning, there is usually one major problem that must be solved before any other problems can be solved. There's usually one major goal that must be achieved before any of the other goals can be achieved. There's usually one critical element in the plan that must be dealt with before any part of the plan can be successful. The good news is that the very act of planning improves and streamlines the entire process of goal achievement. The more often and more carefully you plan before you begin, the better you will get at the planning process overall.
your ability to decide exactly what you want, write it down, make a plan, and then execute that plan is the key to personal effectiveness and high achievement in no time at all. You can transform your life or business, double your sales or profitability, achieve your goals and fulfill your true potential. Now here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. First, make a list of everything that you can think of that you will have to do to achieve your goal. Leave nothing out. Second, organize your list by priority. What is the most important task or activity? What is the second most important and so on? And third, organize your list by sequence. What must be done before something else can be done? Revisit and revise your plan regularly, especially when you get new information or things are not going as you would expect. Be prepared to change if you need.